All right, guys, in this video, we're going to talk about the three different ways to get into venture capital, hedge funds, private equity, you know, those illustrious high finance careers that everyone talks about, right? And we're going to talk about what steps you take to get there. And we're speaking from a little bit of experience here. Um, former JP Morgan employee. Mm -hmm. um, I started multiple funds. I, we have a lot of family actually that works in this industry and runs DECA, billion dollar funds, $100 million funds. We actually have a lot of people around us that do this. And so we're going to share a few examples in this video. So without further ado, down to opportunity. Door number one you see here. Door number one is you are born in the Rockefeller family. Um, so if you have if you have this great rich family, you're a son of a billionaire. Um, awesome. You're probably your mom or dad can just call up a, a fund or a school, and you're gonna get in, and um, you're gonna go, and your dad's name is gonna be on the building of the school. It's gonna be awesome. You're gonna love it. So if that's you, this video is probably not for you, but uh, kudos and go. Good luck. We'll probably work it together in the future. Yeah. Um, okay. uh, that's door number one. If that's you, congrats. Let's move on though to door number two here of the traditional, I call it the traditional route. Yep. That's, I, I would call it that as well. Do what these numbers one through 10 represent? Those are years of your life. All right. So one through four, let's talk about it. This is just your standard degree. So this video may be for, you may be just starting off in college, you may be kind of later down this row in your career, mid-career, um, still, it's important, pay attention, right? So to get into this industry, there's something that happens in between year three and four of college, okay? And that's an internship. But this isn't just any internship. Okay, this is like a high tier internship. This could be an internship at a fund. It could be at a bank. It could be, you know, just something that makes you legit. Consulting firm, Consulting. Bain Company or McKinsey. You're going to Citigroup. You're going somewhere cool yeah. right here. Yeah. And the funny thing about this is, so that's in between year and three and four. You apply somewhere right here. And somehow prior to this, you need to have enough in like experience to help you qualify for that internship, right? So you got to be at the right school with the right degree. You hopefully have done something crazy here to build up to this internship, your junior internship, which is going to just propel your career for the next life. And you think it's the greatest thing ever. Yep. That's right. And what that internship does, we're speaking from experience, me and Lincoln have both done this and we actually landed incredible internships mm -hmm. between our junior and senior year. Yep. Uh, I went out to Silicon Valley. Actually, we both went out to yeah, Silicon Valley. We, we were did. both out there and you were at JP Morgan. Yep. There's another firm out there. And tell us what happened there. It's important to know that people get these analyst jobs by doing an internship there, right? So these, they obviously recruit from their internship class, right? And then if there's any jobs left, then it's usually just word of mouth recommendations. Um, but if you just go and submit your resume on somewhere, you're not going to get the job, okay? Like there's tens of thousands of resumes that go through, right? But yeah, so you kind of have three years as your life of your life just being like grunt analyst, okay? Probably two years as just a, you know, junior analyst, may, and then maybe the last year a senior analyst, you get to feel a little special. Um, so that's nice. You're working a lot of hours here. Your internship, you're going to be working to the bone for, throughout a summer, mm -hmm. hoping to get an offer at the end of the internship. Mm -hmm. And then when you graduate here, you become an analyst. And what kind of hours can you expect depending on your... your oh, man. 60 to 90, right? Depending on what you're in, right? Um, real estate's not as bad. Hedge funds, brutal. Investment banking, brutal, right? Um, so, yeah. Pick your poison. Pick your poison. <laughs> so you got about three years here. Maybe two to three years. Two to two to three years as an analyst. Yep. Um, and then, so then in year eight, so after you've been an analyst, this is the traditional route still, you're going to go and get an MBA. All right. Because here, they're going to tell you, thank you so much for your work, but we can't, we can't really promote you unless you have further education and you complete your MBA. But to get into an MBA, and it can't just be any MBA, right? It's got to be Ivy League MBA, right? You need to be like a Harvard, Stanford, or just some very reputable school. Like a lot of people will say, hey, if you don't get top 10, it's not even worth it, right? That's what a lot of my mentors. Yeah, I've heard that so many you know? times, yeah. So you're not only just any MBA, but a top 10. And something you do have to do to get 
in this program is one, have pretty good grades here, have this rock star internship and work experience. Then you gotta take this beast called the GMAT, man. Sometime when you're working through as an analyst, right? While you're working 60 to 90 hours a week, you need to go and you need to study every evening for the GMAT, right? <laughs> and then start doing interviews and apply. I'm laughing just because this, this is crazy, right? And so it's you brutal. finally, but you did it. Like you studied your tail off and you're so happy and you're like, man, I made it. I'm in my MBA program. Mm -hmm. You're there for, depending on what you're doing, usually about two years, sometimes mm -hmm. three, depending on it. Maybe if you're doing a working or a night MBA. Mm -hmm. You do your MBA, and I oh, we forgot to talk about debt. You're probably let's talk getting, about the cost. That's, what, that, that's cost. exactly what I was going to say here. So average cost undergraduate degree, let's say thirty k maybe a year. That's cheap though. I you would think? say I think average is like ninety. Oh, wait, a year? Are you saying a year? A year. Oh, a year. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, okay. Year, a year. So let's call it. You're in debt one hundred and twenty k, right? Like Unless that, of yeah. course you were in this pile and your parents paid for your school. Then get off this video. Us, we don't even get off this video. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, so you're down not $120, 120k. There's there's thousands behind there, right? This this analyst years they pay pretty good. Yeah. Um, you know you're probably close to six figures, uh, sixty to a hundred. Of course, yeah, you know if you're in a uh, if you're living in San Francisco or New York or London, just know that that entire paycheck goes to rent though, and you know you can't really pay off any of that debt. So yeah. Um, but then of course, studying for the GMAT, you got to pay a little bit, you know, maybe 2K on prep because you can't learn it alone. Like that stuff's hard. Uh, how much does an MBA cost? I've seen anywhere from, well, I've seen 200,000 to about $400,000 total. Yeah. And then you got to calculate opportunity cost. You are losing two years of salary. Yeah. So you're losing two, maybe three years of a hundred grand salary as mm -hmm. well. I've had um, one guy, he walked me through, he said his MBA would have cost him a million dollars by selling his house, moving across the country, buying wow. a place, getting back. It was about, a, and it was, he was going to go to Harvard. Mm -hmm. He was like, I was going to go to Harvard and I calculated it was going to be about a million dollar cost to go to Harvard. And he had to weigh that cost, right? Good or bad. That's just the cost of, of what it would be. Yep. So here you're at, okay, 120K plus 250. I would say you're near, you know, let's, I mean, being conservative with all that stuff. I don't know. Three, I guess we can just add up our math here. 370. Yeah, at least, right? Yeah. And that's not even, that's just by yourself, right? You've probably at this time, nine years later, you've either got a wife or a serious girlfriend or, or a dog kids or a cat, right? Yeah. You know, even kids that you got you to gotta pay for. So a lot of things. But after, after all of that, you did it. Nine years of your life. Good work. That's awesome. Then, you can, people say you write your ticket, right? You can, that's that's when you're actually getting in the industry, right? You get to be an associate, okay? Honestly, an analysts, like they don't, they don't do much. They're not that involved. You're more of just doing stuff for other people. I would say at the associate level is actually when it really starts of you, you know, making a difference of being involved in deals, right? And actually yeah. doing something. So you start your associate, you know, you're still an associate. You're at the bottom of the tier now. And maybe now you're in the private equity or the hedge fund firm that you want to work at. And from here, you might get some stock options, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit. And every year, your salary hopefully will grow a little bit. What kind of what kind of salary are you making here? You know, guys, the salaries are really good, okay? As an associate, like the reason people do this is people make a lot of money, mm -hmm. okay? You know, 200 grand, uh, it's usually, it's a base and bonus structure, probably like 150 but base plus uh, a bonus at the end of the year, anywhere from 60 to 100 to 150,000, right? And it just grows up. You do get compensated really well, right, as an associate. And then, but you do that for three years. But defining really well, I mean, 300 grand yeah. is great in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. In the entrepreneur world, I, that's not that crazy. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. And like we're talking like, yeah. like a corporate ladder. Yeah, 300 grand salary is awesome. Wow, I did it. Like go me. In the entrepreneurship space, like I talked to a number of friends, you're making less than 250. Yeah. 200, like you're struggling. Your company's not doing that well, obviously. Mm -hmm. Like you you got some things to fix. Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting how you define well. But anyways, we'll call this well. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so and you made it. But you gotta do that for three years, and then you just gotta climb the corporate ladder from there, right? VP, you're still not in charge, other people are in charge of you, and there's maybe a couple more roles in between here, but then, you know, that's another three years as a VP. You know, you're gonna be at that PM slash MD. 
Okay, like portfolio manager, managing director, managing partner, like that's that's where that's where you want to be. And right? you're making you're making millions of dollars at that point. Yeah, probably. yeah, you're yeah. doing pretty well. Go watch our video about how much fund managers make. Or you can do what my friend Bridger here did. All right. So now we're going to talk about Route Three, right? So unfortunately, I hate to say it, I was on this route, and uh, Bridger converted me. Okay. Well, I was on the route as well. And, and we're going to talk about door number three. I, I love the quote. Maybe leave this. Yeah, leave this up. You can delete this side stuff. But the uh, door number two here, it's nice. It's, you know, it's a, it's a path. You've got to do a lot of work for a long time. Mm-hmm. And it was very interesting. I was actually at this point. I was in, at my college, you know, university doing well. I got the in, I got the ju- the sophomore internship and then the junior internship. And I thought I was up and up and doing all this great stuff. And what I decided to do was call a few people that were here, right? Right, they were probably seven years, six years ahead of me on the exact same path. They had done the finance internship, they'd done investment bank here, consulting, they had come here. I called them up to see, and they were alumni of the school and good friends of mine. And I called, I remember I called one of them, the first guy, hey, what's going on? Hey, I, 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 my name's Bridger, I just wanted to, I'm a student at the school, I wanted to hear your thoughts and advice on this industry and what you did. And I go, you're like 30 years old now. Like, tell me about your experience. He goes, you know, it's funny. He goes, I actually just moved out of Boston. He was doing this whole thing. And he goes, I'm, I'm working in Texas. I just started a business and I'm, I'm totally out of the industry. And I was like, why? Like, what, what, what happened? And he goes, well, I was just burnt out. I had a wife and a, a child at the time. And I, I was about to do a whole MBA program and do the associate. And I just like, I, my wife was going to divorce me. She was out. And I, I had to get out of the industry. And I said, okay, well, thank you so much. And he talked with you. And I hung up, called the next guy up. Hey, what's going on? Um, he was, I think, a little bit further down the road, maybe year 11. And he goes, oh, I, I left that long ago. And I said, what? And he said, yeah, about his second, he did the two years as an analyst. And he said, I'm done. And uh, he went and spun out. And now he was uh, working at another company as a CFO or something and doing something else. And, and it totally spun out of this industry. And I called person after person. And they told, I heard this, I think out of 10 people I called, only two were still here. And they, then they were telling me, okay, the next decade, how they were going to move up and work and hustle and work mm-hmm. late nights and get there. And I thought, huh, it's interesting. And I love the quote, uh, you guys have probably heard this before, but people overestimate they, what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in a decade. Most companies that we know of as of today, you see uh, Lyft, you see Uber, Oculus, all these incredible companies coming out, they weren't even a thought 10 years ago. Think about how much you can accomplish in a decade. And I was sitting here at year two and a half of my career three, somewhere around there, and I thought, I wonder the next decade, if I can work hard and spend time, whatever, and beat these guys. The, the goal is, so let's call, let's call it 350 grand a year. I said, I bet in 10 years, I bet I can make more than 350 grand a year doing something else. Because mm-hmm. the goal is money, right? The reason we're in this is for money, right? People like to say prestige and other things. The reason you work every day though, if you don't, if you weren't getting a paycheck, you probably wouldn't show up, right? It's for money. The goal in, in a career is money. And I thought over 10 years, I wonder if there's a different route that I could go. And I actually called Lincoln up. I think, I think we sat down well, to lunch we or something, right? lunch. Yeah. So yeah, we were both in San Francisco at the same time right there. And I sat down I just said, Lincoln, I just think this is garbage. I'm looking at people that are slaves that are five years ahead of me. I'm working with them every day. They hate their life. They don't have a social life. They don't have a family. They don't have kids. They don't, they're don't. they unhappy people. <laughs> and most of them were spinning out. And so I thought, I wonder if there's a different way. I wonder if there's a different path. And that's where we transition over to door number three here. And I thought, I wonder if I could start my own. And, um, I actually, I, um, I, and you, if some of you guys have heard my story in another place, I won't go through the whole thing, but I found an incredible mentor and sat down and he taught me about funds, how, and I said, this is my goal. I wanted to run a, a I want to be an asset manager. I want to run a fund. And he told me, he says, Bridger, I was a lot like you in my twenties. I was going to do this. And I figured out this secret world of the rich, the secret world of private equity, of hedge funds or venture capital. And I figured out how they work and how they run. And so we sat down and over a period of months, we sat down and he taught me 
everything he knew about funds, how they work and how they're structured. And between him and, and um, you, from my other videos, you guys know my, my dad, I didn't know this growing up, my dad was running a big fund. They, at the time, they were about $8 billion under management. And I know what you guys are thinking. You're like, well, wait a second. Bridger's dad here is a fund manager. Bridger's got to... I'm in, I'm in door fall, one. He falls in door one. He's a chief. It's not true. <laughs> I've, I've, met, I've worked both with him. His dad won't give him a dollar. Um, to this day, my dad has never invested in any of our funds, yeah. any deals, any projects, anything we've done. Yep. But great mentor and sat me down and taught me about funds. And my dad, he grew up in North Las Vegas, ghetto North Las Vegas, got C's and B's through high school and college, barely graduated university, didn't didn't have the grades to do any of this, but yet figured out what a fund was and over a decade was able to start a fund and they, they scaled it, him and his partner scaled it above $10 billion in assets under management and real estate. If he, And I looked at him, I was like, well, he's not that smart. I wonder if I can do it, right? <laughs> and you've met him. I mean, yep. he's a nice guy. He's not yeah. that sophisticated of a guy. And so I set out, I had a great idea. Um, I was at working at a company at the time. I was like, I was an intern. It wasn't the same internship, but it was a different internship. And I thought, I wonder if we could lend money to their clients. Mm -hmm. And I talked to the owners. They they thought it was a good idea. So I said, I want to set up a fund and we're going to lend money to some of their clientele that come through here. So I I um, got all I met with my dad and other mentors. We put together, you know, we kind of thought through, help me think tank it, the whole thing. I got my fund kind of put together. And I thought, okay, I got to raise money now, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the big piece of a fund is you need money. Yep. And so I uh I remember I said, well, I'm going to ask my dad. My dad's rich, apparently. I didn't know this. We grew, up, we, we seriously grew up in an average house. My dad drove a car with 200,000 miles on it, an old Ford Expedition. It was not showy. I learned by from his partner, his business partner, that he was wealthy. I didn't even know this. And I was like, what? Why haven't we gone on trips and vacation? Like, why are we like, you know, why am I saving my money every month and, you know, hope saving up for an iPod as a kid or whatever, right? <laughs> and uh, anyways, long story short, I went and talked to my dad and I asked him for money. And I was 22 years old at the time. I said, dad, how would you like to be my first investor into your, to our fund? And I gave him the whole pitch and he said, no. He said, if I, if I invest in your fund, it will ruin the experience of you raising money on your own. And it was a big, tough love moment between me and my dad. And I went out and I hit the streets. I took him up on the offer. I talked to every single person I knew. I talked to former bosses, college professors, neighbors, friends from high school, their friends from high school's parents, like anybody. <laughs> and after about four or five weeks, I raised a whopping $49,000 for my first micro syndicate fund. Very small amount, obviously, but it was enough to get started. And we got our first group of investors together. We started doing these micro loans. They were like a thousand to five thousand dollars a piece to these these different clients from that business. And our first investors got a sixty four percent return on their money on well, the forty nine grand. And I think that's crucial. It's a crucial part of the story, right? Is because nothing happens in this business unless you get your investors a return, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about you making money. It's about your investors making money. Because once your investors make money, then you can scale. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I made a couple grand doing that. I didn't make much, but it was a track record builder. And it, and what happened was all those investors, they started to brag to their friends that they got a great investment with Bridger. Hey, you guys should check this guy out. And so we went and launched Fund 2. And since then, we've raised millions of dollars out of Fund and, and deployed millions of dollars out of Fund 2. It's been awesome. And now we're launching Fund 3. We're actually transitioning into real estate. We've, we've soft raised about $18 million right now. It's been pretty awesome and, and cool. And right now I'm still on this. I'm like at year five or six of this journey, right? Mm -hmm. And I have friends that are still, you have friends too probably that are still in this oh, yeah. route. Oh, and yeah. they now are calling me up. Hey, how are you doing? How did you jump a decade? How are you running multi-million dollar funds? Well, because here's something to consider guys. Like you talk to somebody who's done one fund. They made four, you know, it was, it was 49 grand. Uh, who cares? But they've done a deal, right? Mm -hmm. This, I would argue that this guy knows way more than this guy about deal making. Okay. It, regardless of their prior experience, like this guy is more credible in my book. They've actually done it, right? And investors believe the same way. Yeah. You, you, I think the fast way to learn is by doing. Yeah. And that's why we went on this route. And then we got here. We're now on Fun 3 right now. We're launching it as we speak. Um, it's pretty fun. We got a yeah. lot of fun stuff going. And, uh, and I'm in the game, right? I'm not waiting and answering someone else's emails and taking orders. Yeah. Like we're in the game. We're we're launching our own Making stuff. decisions, talking to investors, doing everything, right? Exactly. Right now, Lincoln's getting into a few real estate deals and getting in the game. I, it's a, it's When you start moving, 
it's incredible what happens, especially with in such a, like we live in America, it's yeah. the greatest country on earth for entrepreneurship, even regardless of COVID and all this other stuff, it's the greatest country on earth for entrepreneurship. And this is proven right here. And so we went and launched this and it's taken off like crazy. And then, so since then, since doing this, we launched, we, I had a lot of people asking me, myself, my dad, my brother's a security attorney. And I, by the way, before you go crazy in the comments, I understand the uniqueness of my position of having a dad who runs a deca billion dollar fund. I get that. And you're like, ah, I could never do it, right? So what I decided, we decided to do was we put together an online program and content to give you guys the same access. Mm-hmm. My dad, really all he gave me was knowledge and advice, right? No dollars, right? Just knowledge and advice. And so what we did for you guys was we brought together, we bring together people like my dad or other fun men, men, mentors and managers. If you've ever read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I kind of had the rich dad and we're bringing you access to that. And that's why we started Investment Fund Secrets. We started this community and group. We have over a thousand members inside of our paid mastermind group that are all launching and scaling funds. We have a few funds out of there that have launched. We have one fund over 500, 500 million. million that launched a year ago, one year, zero dollars, right? We have, we have two other funds over uh, 15 million, one fund over 10 million, a number of funds over a million dollars that are launched pe- regular people like me and you yeah. that said, screw wa- the wall street traditional route <laughs> and said, I'm going to go make a name for myself. I'm going to figure this out. And so we put together courses and content, all sorts of stuff to help people launch and scale funds and follow door number three which I think is a is a pretty fun way to live life, very lucrative way to live life. And you don't have to go through the grime of this. And most of these people end up never even getting to this point anyways because they spin they out, they do something out. else, they burn out. No one can do that that long. People overestimate they can do in one year and underestimate they can do in a decade. So do something about it, guys. If you made it this far, then click on the link below and uh, join us in the group. Yeah, you can schedule a call. I think we have a one-hour free training on there. We got a lot of stuff below. Click on the link below and, and join up with us. We are the Wall Street. That's why we got these shirts on. We're the Wall Street rebels. So we do. We are. We are saying, screw you, Wall Street guys. We can do it more efficiently, faster, and at a younger age or more quicker than than you guys can. And it's been pretty incredible to be a part of it and do it and, and to hear your guys' story as well. So hit the link below if you guys want to learn more, if you want to talk to us or meet up or whatever. We've got this small, it's kind of this cool cool corner of the internet of these yeah. Wall Street degenerates that are <laughs> building funds and, and taking this by the street and going after it. Well, and with that said, we actually do have a lot of people in our program that did work you know, all three years as an analyst yeah. that went and got their Harvard MBA, that went to Yale, went somewhere. And the funny thing is, is they say that they learn something new in our program, right? <laughs> they still want to come. They're like, I actually learned. Wait, what, one lady said she learned more on our one hour, just a one hour training below than what an entire semester at her MBA to her last semester Yeah, from our one hour training. So we try to get to the point. We try to cut through the garbage of all the stuff out there and just give you the exact things you need to know. So there you have it. Yeah. That's us for today. Click the link below. We'll see you guys inside. Bye.